Good morning and welcome to this short class that will focus on opening the hip flexors. Hip flexors can cause a lot of issues for us when it comes to our low back. <laughs> and it's just really important to open them up, especially if you've been sitting a lot. So this will be a very quick practice, mobility and flexibility. So join me on all fours, just to prepare the spine. Let's round and arch, round and arch. Last time round, slide those hands in and come onto the shins, roll the shoulders. From here, we'll take that right leg forward into a 90-90 lunge. So thigh in line with hip, shin in line with knee. And if you're very tight, you might already feel this and reach the arms up. Inhale, perhaps as you can gaze up in the smallest of back bends, just to see how that feels in the hip flexors. And then return to center. Hands come to your thigh. You might bend the knee and lengthen the leg just a little, bend and come out a little. Mm -hmm. It's a few times, mobility at the present. And then bring the hands down to frame the front foot. Try to keep a nice long spine. Maybe you adjust the back knee so it extends a little farther. Broaden across the chest. And from here, we'll lengthen the lead leg, stretch the hip foot, hamstring just for a moment, and then come back into the hip stretch. Again, come back and forward. So walk the hands toward yourself and away. One more time, come forward and flex or tuck the back toes rather, lift the back knee. And you can decide here if you'd like to have the hands still framing the front foot or have them on the inside. I like them to frame. And I even come onto the finger pads. This is where blocks can be nice too. So here we can lengthen the lead leg and rebend. Lengthen and rebend. So you might be thinking, oh, we're getting into the the hamstrings a little bit, but we're also into the hip flexors when we rebend the knee and really press through the back forefoot, even extend your stance a little longer so you can creep that um, back foot further behind you. So this rebend and lengthen. One more time. And then from here, lower back knee. Do what you need to to send that, whoops, right leg back behind you long. Cross it over to the left hand side, touch the toes down. Might feel this a bit in the front of the hip. Lift that leg, take it out to the side. I'll show you from the front for a moment to get the inseam of the leg. You can rock forward and back here. You might feel this a little more in the hip at certain, um, in certain positions. I find I feel it more in the hip region when I lean back just a little. You can pause. And then come back to center. And again, take that leg forward. And this time we'll stay, bringing the hands to the inseam of the lead leg for lizard. And get into the groins here again. Scooch that back knee further behind you if you'd like. And we're staying and stretching. 
caress through the hands. One more inhale here. And if you'd like, you could stay or play with the foot. I just turned so you could see. You could blade the foot and come onto the outer edge of the foot. And see if this changes the experience in the hip, in through the groins. You might prefer to go back to the other way. Just see. I find it really brings it into the groin for me and in seam of the leg. And this is where that right hand can come to the same thigh, rotate toward it, and then come back to center and lift off the back knee again, just to stay. and step back into a plank. And then these can come down as you lower onto the belly and come onto the forearms for Sphinx. Or if you have the availability in the back, you can come onto the hands and seal. This really opens the front line. Maybe you play with the neck if it's safe for you. And we all have different space between our vertebra. So how high you come up can be determined by your vertebra. We don't want any pain in the low back. Come on in the forearms. If there's any discomfort. And then lower all the way onto the belly. Clasp the right ankle with the same hand. Head can be down here. And then inhale to lift the head and the leg, maybe a little higher and lower. Lift and lower. One more time, lift, pause. And lower back down, but keep the ankle, press the front of the hip, or pelvis rather, into the earth. And let that go. Press back into a child's pose only to round the spine, bring yourself into tabletop and make circles with the hips and reverse. In this time, that left foot will come forward. Let's roll up through the spine, find the 90-90 version and see how that feels. Arms reach. Really get that sense of length as you press back shin down. And extend the spine just a little. Perhaps you look up at the ceiling. Feel yeah, this feels in the hip, inhale. And exhale, hands come back down and land on the front thigh. Here you can Rock forward and back a little. Let's see how this feels. This is our mobility work here, exploring range of motion as we increase the range, bring the hands down and lengthen lead leg and rebend. Lengthen and bend. So a few times here. Your own pace and it's back in space when that leg goes long. One more time, come back and forward. Again, hands are perhaps framing or on the inside as you tuck the back toes and lengthen lead leg and rebend again. Just a few more. Mm -hmm. 
drive through the back heel, really press that foot down, long active leg, back leg. One more time, come forward. Ah, and then lower the back knee to the earth. Hands come to the inseam. And decide uh, where you'd like to land. Some people even come down lower onto the forearms. I find to keep it in my hip flexors, like the stretch sensation, I like to be high, and just scooch the back knee further behind me. Breathe as if you could breathe into the pelvis. We kind of can, and that the diaphragm will move, pelvic diaphragm. In response to the main diaphragm. Stay here or Again, roll onto the outer edge of that left foot and see how that feels. Inhale and exhale to take that left hand to the same thigh, be rotate. And then return both hands to the earth as you slide left leg back behind you, take it long and cross it, toes touch down. So as. Often linked to low back pain as well. It's like the hip flexors are. They over engage and the glutes under engage. One more inhale and exhale to bring the legs back side by each. And this time we'll roll forward with the chest, bring it through the arms, ah, press back almost into child's only to slide forward onto the belly and clasp left ankle. Again, there's a slight tilt of the pelvis toward the earth. As we press hand into foot, foot into hand. Inhale to lift torso and leg a little. Exhale to lower. Extend and lift. Lower. Two more. Last one, lift, lower, really firmly press thigh into earth. And let that go. Hands slide toward the body to press yourself back so that you can sit on your heels, lift through the front of the body, let the traps cradle the head. Hmm. And lower the hips and return to seated. Could be on the shins if that's okay for the knees. And just take a few breaths to ground after your practice. Hmm. Slowly blink your eyes open. 
And you could always continue your meditation or savasana. But I want to keep this quick today. So we'll end with a big reach of the arms to the sky. And hands palm to palm, bring them through center. Thank you for enjoying the short practice with me today. I hope that you feel a little more open through your hip creases. Satnam, have a lovely day.